Praise the Lord. I trust you are doing well in the Lord today. So today I will be answering two questions that two of you left in the comments recently. So one of you was saying, uh, thank you for the lesson today. I realized that after praying in tongues at the midnight watch, I will sleep and always have dreams. Dreams that pass a message. Meanwhile, I'm always there in those situations to help the people in question. How do we call this stage? Then the other one was asking, I dreamt of laying my hands on a sick girl and she was healed. So there is these times I was so close to God that even when I'm sick, like a headache, tonsils, stomachache, I could only pray and the pain would vanish. But now I run to take painkillers. It's like I lost that power or something. So as you can realize, both these questions are dream related. And that is why I wanted to answer them both in this video today. So that is what I'll be going through in this particular video. And then just something to note, if you have a question, you can always include your name at the end of the comment, so that at least I know your name and at least call out your blessed name. So I understand the people who left these questions. They had questions in mind and of course that is why they left those particular comments. So in this video, I'll try to cover as much as I can to address those two questions and hopefully give a very good answer to them. And in case you also have had issues with dreams and praying in tongues, then I believe this will also be an answer to you. So the first thing, uh, why is it that um, we usually have an increase in dreams anytime that we pray in tongues? Well, it turns out there is a connection between praying in tongues and dreams. Now, the thing that you need to know is that dreams are spiritual and praying in tongues is also spiritual. So when you pray in tongues, what happens is that the Holy Spirit, because he is a spirit, he is the spirit of God, what he does is that he charges up our spirit. He makes our spirit more sensitive. He, he makes our spirit more receptive to whatever the Lord is doing. Now, because the Holy Spirit often makes our spirit sensitive, it automatically means that we will be more sensitive in the spiritual realm when we pray in tongues a lot. And that is why anytime you pray in tongues a lot, you are almost always going to have clearer dreams and more dreams. Or even just the general sort of um, feeling of the just an increase in spiritual activities around you or just how sensitive you become to spiritual things around you you are more sensitive to things around you that are spiritual so that is usually why you have many dreams so from these two uh, from these two questions of course the it is very clear that you are praying in tongues and from praying in tongues of course you are definitely going to get more dreams so that is a very normal thing to happen and it should be happening so if you are praying in tongues and you are not really getting dreams, it means that what? There is probably something that is really blocking the dreams that you should be getting because oftentimes God communicates to us through dreams. So at least when you pray in tongues, you should be in a position to get dreams. And then now from there, we can start thinking of how to interpret or understand those particular dreams. But receiving them should be a straightforward matter. Now, the second thing that I felt I need to address is um, about dreams having a message. There are people who keep asking these questions. Do, dream, do all dreams have a message? And for me, what I love saying is that every dream has a message. Even if the dream itself looks like a very plain and obvious dream or it doesn't make sense at all, every dream usually has a message. Because if it was not a dream, then... Like if it didn't have a message, then it doesn't even qualify to be called a dream. Now, the other thing is that even bad dreams, there are still dreams with messages, even if they may be negative messages. So every dream has a message. I love thinking about it like going to the market. Anytime you go to the market, you will usually find so many people and there are so many transactions going on. And usually the thing with a market is that Everyone is saying whatever they are saying at the same time. And there's a lot of noise. Everyone's speaking whatever they speak. So it doesn't mean that whatever those people are speaking doesn't make sense. It is just that you will only understand whatever you pay attention to. So if you have someone selling on that market and a customer comes to you 
if you listen to that customer speaking to you and block out the noise of what those other customers are saying or what th those other people in the market are saying, then you can always understand whatever that the customer who is speaking to you is actually saying. So the thing with dreams is that there is a lot of information in, in dreams and there are all manner of dreams and so many kinds of dreams. But you see, just like being on a market, you have to pay attention to a particular dream for you to actually understand that particular dream. But dreams will always be there. So every dream has a message. If you pay attention to a particular dream and you seek out to get the interpretation or the understanding of a particular dream, you will always get the understanding of that dream. But if you don't seek out to get the interpretation or the understanding, then of course the Holy Spirit will also not bother to actually give you details about that particular dream. Now, the first person was asking that um, she helps a lot. She, she helps people a lot in their dreams. So what does that actually mean? So of course, the thing with the dreams that you need to understand is when God is showing you a dream or the dreams that you usually have, in very many cases, there are dreams that are portraying your, your exact situation in that particular moment. Basically, if you like in this case where you pray and then after you have you are done praying you go to sleep and you find yourself helping a lot of people basically that is what is happening in the spiritual realm that is how god is actually seeing you the way you are living because you see when you are praying for people in the physical of course you are in your room praying for people or you are somewhere praying for people but you see the way god actually perceives is it like perceives it is like you are literally helping those people and so when you are having a dream and God is showing you a glimpse of what he actually sees you doing, then of course it is going to be a dream where you find yourself helping people a lot. So it is just a way of God acknowledging that you are actually helping people and just a way to motivate you to actually continue praying for people and interceding for people. So if you are praying in tongues and then you begin having this kind of dreams, then you can understand that the tongues that you are actually speaking, they have an impact and that you are actually helping people by those prayers that you are making. So the whole purpose of this is generally just to motivate you to keep praying and to continue in that particular manner. So basically just God saying, I am pleased with you. I see what you are doing. More like what God said concerning Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. You see, he was just acknowledging that this man actually gives what he gives alms and gifts to the poor and god well, like it had gotten to to the point that god wanted to acknowledge and also let cornelius himself know that actually god appreciates it and so that's why god had to send peter to go to him so basically that is just what this dream means where you find yourself helping people a lot it just motivates you to continue helping people now the other thing is that you can always add a bit more from just praying for people to now physically helping people because you see that dream is also a bit of a suggestion of what you can actually do physically so as much as that is what you are doing in the spiritual and as much as god is pleased with it there is always something more you can add to it in case you want to do to go a step ahead and do a bit more than what you are already doing so that's basically what that particular dream means so it is just a, like it is more just like information that the lord is giving you nothing really much about that particular dream and then you can also analyze the dream you can now start going into detail just the way i keep mentioning here that um when you are interpreting dreams you have you choose how much information you want to draw out of those dreams so you can start analyzing what kind of people you are actually helping in that dream then you can know that what god like you have more of an inclination to help that group of people so like here probably helping sort of a young girl you can now tell that probably you have a heart that is more inclined to help young girls because you see for us as people we usually have certain groups of people that we find easy to help and certain groups of people that we relate to more than other groups of people and we are more likely to help those people in that particular group than any other group so if you dream yourself maybe helping children then you can know that you have a heart that is inclined towards helping children if you dream yourself helping women you can know you are going to help women if you dream yourself maybe teaching people you can know that those are the kind of people you are called to like teach so those different groups you can go into those kind of details to know and even maybe you can now even begin analyzing what were you teaching those people and then you can always know that that is most likely the inclination that 
God has called you into. That is the ministry he has called you into. That is the specification that God has actually called you to, to go and do. So basically, you can go into those details and then you can always get a clearer picture of the dream. Now, from the second dream, of course, now this is um, the one who was talking about uh, she used to uh, like laying hands on people and praying for, for, for people. But nowadays, things are a bit shaky. Now, the first thing that um, you may be asking yourself, what does that kind of a dream actually mean? Now, this is also still just a dream that is showing you your state in the spiritual realm. God usually sends us these dreams very often. And the reason why it is more just like a report to show you where you are at this particular time. Because, you know, our work as believers, it keeps fluctuating. And because it keeps fluctuating, God has to constantly show us where we are, what we are doing wrong, or maybe what is not really going well so that we fix it or so that we adjust one or two things. So that is why God will keep showing us these dreams that just show our general state of being or our general state of relationship with him. So this kind of dream where, of course, you had uh, this uh, sort of dream where you used to, like you are praying for some sick girl and she actually got healed. It is God still proving to you that you still have that power to actually lay hands on the sick and for them to recover you still have that gift he like he has still this like that gift that he gave to you it is still within you that's why you can actually do it in the dream now as i told you before you see this means that it is an active gift but mostly in the spiritual but you see you have to always manifest the spiritual happenings in the in the physical and you see, there are things that you can do in the spirit or you can see yourself doing in the spirit, but you can't do them in, in physical, like in the physical. Reason being, probably you have not trained your physical man to be disciplined enough to deliver those kind of things. But your spiritual man may be at a position where he already has that level of anointing or that level of power. Because think of someone who has the gift of healing. You see, that person has the gift of healing and can lay hands on anyone and the person will recover. But unless the person gets out of his house and actually goes to a sick person and lays the, their hands on that person, no one is actually going to get healed from that particular gift. So you see, the act of you waking up to actually go and lay hands on the sick, it is a physical act. And you see that physical act, it, it requires what? Your physical discipline and for you to set time and for you to put in the physical effort to actually go look for people who are sick or uh, like lay hands on them and all that. So that is basically what that dream means. So the thing is, you may be asking, what made you have the power that you had before? Because as you have said here before, when you used to have any sort of ailments, sicknesses, stomach aches or whatnot, you will just pray and then you will get better. But nowadays you find that it is very difficult to pray and get those things out. So you have to go and uh, take medication. Now, this is the thing. Healing is usually based on the level of faith that people have. And of course, faith, we gather or like we grow our faith by the knowledge that we have. And then, of course, we, we like um, bring it to, 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 to manifestation when we actually take action. So basically, anytime that you are praying, you see what you are doing. Praying is mainly communication. So many times when you are praying in tongues, you see you are allowing God to speak to you, to communicate to you, your state to communicate to you uh, how you are faring on basically in your work with him. So if he wants to address something to do with the gift that he actually gave you, then of course he's going to give you this kind of dream. So initially it means that you had good faith where that your faith was able to actually deliver those kind of results. But you see the thing with faith is that it is never constant. Faith is something that it is either growing or it is either diminishing. So that is something you should always be aware of. And that is why the Bible urges us to pray without ceasing. And it also urges us to meditate on the word day and night. So you see, the reason why we have to meditate on the word day and night and pray without ceasing is because faith actually, if we don't do that, our faith will start going down. It doesn't matter how great your faith is. Basically, if you stay for a long time without reading the word, your faith will start going down and and your power will also begin going down. Now, the thing with healing is that it requires a particular level of faith. So as long as your faith is above that particular threshold, 
you are always going to have an easy time performing any healing or praying for any sickness and that sickness will actually disappear but you see the thing is that the moment your faith goes below that particular point then it means that you can no longer do or pray those particular diseases off and that is where you now go to seek medication now medication of course many people say it is science but actually medication is still part of faith it is just that when you use medication you actually require less faith than when you don't use medication performing a healing of laying on of hands requires a lot more faith than the healing that a doctor does because actually doctors they are still just people called what in the ministry of healing the difference is that for them they are called to serve people who have very little faith people who cannot probably sustain the level of faith where they will just go for someone to lay their hands on them to receive the that particular healing and that's why you see like with medication it comes with a lot of side effects because it has very little faith but you see the greater the faith it also means that what the greater the power that is actually involved and also the the more perfect the healing it, like the more perfect the healing will actually be so there is actually nothing wrong with taking medication if you are feeling unwell and also praying at the same time it is just a level of faith it is just that if your faith cannot sustain to heal you like without the need of medication you may have to supplement that faith with a bit of medication but you see the thing is that if your faith is perfect in the first place you will not even fall sick but you see there are people whose faith is not so perfect that they cannot fall sick they can fall sick but you see for them they can do it they can just pray themselves back into into perfect health but then there are those people whom their faith is not strong enough for them to pray themselves into back into perfect healing so as much as they pray they have to supplement their faith with a bit of using drugs or going to the doctors but all those are just what methods of healing that actually god provided for human beings so in this particular case just know that initially you are there was something that you are doing most likely you are meditating on the word a lot more and you are praying a lot more and you are focused on your relationship with god a, a lot more which made your faith strong enough and gave you enough power to actually just um pray off most of those diseases but right now it becomes a bit of a challenge so you may be asking yourself what do you need to do to uh, do you need to do anything and if there is anything you need to do what do you need to do well this is the thing as human beings god gives us a choice to decide how much faith we are going to live with but basically the general rule is that the more faith you have the easier your life becomes the easier it is to actually solve problems the less faith you have the more difficult it is to actually solve problems so that is why as a human being god is going to give you a choice of how much faith you want to you want to live with because remember the bible also tells us that we we, we do not walk by sight but we walk by faith so basically if you focus on growing your faith more and more then it means that you are going to have an easy time solving problems and solving issues within your your life and just generally problems uh, that affect most human beings to you to become a lot easier to solve them but if your faith is less then it means that what you are going to have a bit more of what a challenge because even just think of it if you are going to receive healing by someone laying his hand on you people don't charge money to lay hands on you and you will get perfectly healed you will not have to take any bitter medication you will not have to go through any surgery you will not need to go through those medical procedures which are generally painful but you see now that requires a bit more faith but you see if your faith is less it will mean that what you will have to go to those like to those doctors will have to perform those medical procedures and those medical procedures are going to cost you money they are going to take your time and they are going to be painful so you see the lesser the faith it will still have a solution but it will be what more painful but if you have more faith it always makes your work easier and, and uh, it is always cheaper so faith is infinitely good so you can always seek for it so you see these are the kind of things that are within our free will for us to choose how much faith we want so you see there have always been this sort of a debate where some people feel like we should pray but also go to the hospital anytime we are sick but others say we can we should just be praying and get healing directly without the, the necessity to go to the hospital but you see those are just differences of faith because you can always pray 
and and uh, not need to go to the hospital because you can always pray and God will heal you without the need of any medication. But that has a requirement of faith, a higher level of faith. So if you cannot attain that level of faith, then of course you cannot receive that kind of healing. You'll have to go with the lesser one. So it is up to you to decide how much faith you want to have and how much uh, like like how much work you want to do or how much uh, comfort do you want to have but basically that is it so in this particular case when you spend time in prayer when you spend your time reading the word of god what that will do is it will build up your faith because even praying in tongues and reading the word of god it builds our relationship with god it builds our faith with god which generally makes what solving problems easier whether they are health problems or financial problems or any other problem, it just makes it way easier for us to actually solve those particular problems. But you see, anytime we stop praying as much or we stop reading the word of God, our faith goes down and that means we have to go through a lot more pain to actually get solutions to most of the problems that we have. And this is why sometimes, like I usually recommend to someone, if you're having any sort of problem, just focus on praying and reading the word of God and building your relationship with God. Because when you do that, it is going to build your faith. And when your faith is built, it will become very easy to solve that particular problem. But you see, if you go focusing on the problem itself, you will have a lot more work to solve that problem. It will be a lot harder to solve that particular problem with very little faith. So you can always balance how much faith do you want to apply to your situation and how much like of an effort do you want to put in that situation. If you feel your life is too difficult, all you need to do is just build up your faith by spending more time in prayer, spending more time in meditating on the word of God and building your relationship with God. But once you do that, you can always be assured that God will make things very easy for you. So those were the two dreams, the two questions that I wanted to address today. I hope I have answered them perfectly and I hope if you had similar questions around the same, that one at least helps you answer most of those questions. If you have any other follow-up question, you can always leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to go through them and answer them as the Lord helps me. So that is it for today. God bless you.